اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین السلاۃ وسلام علی سید الاشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین جبیب قلوب نا و جبیب نفوس نا ابل کاسم محمد وسلاۃ وسلام علی اہل طیبین الطاہرین المعصومین المنتجبین ولعنت اللہ علی اعدائہم اجمعین قال عزوج اللہ فی قرآن المجید والفرقان الحمید بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قل لا اسألکم علیہ اجرا اللہ المودتا فی اللہ قربا اللہ اور صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم Alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jal, the merciful, has yet again blessed us with enough life that today on this blessed day, in this blessed month of Ramadan, we have gathered to do another iftari, thanking Allah Azza wa Jal for all the bounties that He has continuously showered us with and alhamdulillah today's iftari has been organized by our brother Asam Ali of Leeds we do dua may Allah azawajal for the sake of the zikr of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad bless him and his family and continuously shower his house with his barakat and ni'mat inshaAllah Alhamdulillah, every single day we have been gathering, trying to learn something from the lives of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam in such a way that we can change ourselves into that person that Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam are pleased with us. On the day of Qiyamah, we have discussed that that will be that day when no one will be able to help anyone. Only a person's a'amal or those good actions which he has done in this dunya will help him on that day of Qiyamah or those amal which he has done such as sadqah jariya that he has done in this world that will help him on that day when no one will be able to help him. But on that day of Qiyamah, when every single person will be complaining in regards to himself, he will be complaining, Ya Allah, only if I would have had time, I would have recited more Salah. Only if I had the opportunity and I understood the azmat of the Quran, I would have recited the Quran. On that day, everyone will be complaining to themselves because Allah Azawajal has given you an opportunity in this dunya to want to try to connect with him, two to try to connect with his messenger and three to try to connect with those people that have been authorized by Allah Azawajal. Now after Allah, the love that will benefit us on the day of Qiyamah is the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after the love of Rasulullah, it is the love of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wa salam, which will benefit us on the day of Qiyamah. Yani all of our a'mal that we do, we do not know whether they are accepted or not. Our namaz, our hajj, our umrah, our zakat, our khums, our tawalla, our tabarra, all of our farwajin that we do, we do not know whether they are accepted or not. We do not know on the day of Qiyamah if we shall receive any ajr for those actions or not. But there is one amal 
that we are certain, which is accepted, and which will benefit us in this dunya, and it will also benefit us in the hereafter, and that amal is the love of Ahlul Bayt Because this is that ajar that Allah has asked for. Yani it is that amal, that action which is necessary for the acceptance of all of other amal that we do. Yani the Holy Prophet says that if a person wants his amal to be accepted, if a person wants the yaqeen, the certainty, that all of his a'mal will be accepted, then he needs to do every single a'mal with the love of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam. Yani the love of Ahlul Bayt is that foundation from Allah Azzawajal, that if we have the love of Ahlul Bayt, then every other action is accepted by Allah. So on that day, as I was saying, we will be complaining to ourselves. But there are three also other things which will complain on the day of Qiyam. And those three things will complain about us. We will be complaining about ourselves. Three things will be complaining about us on the day of Qiyam. The first thing that will raise its voice in front of Allah on the day of Qiyamah, that thing will be a masjid. Masjid, according to the hadith, is from Imam Jafar Sadiq says that the first thing which will complain on the day of Qiyamah, on the day of Mahshar, is that masjid which we built but nobody read namaz in that masjid. Nowadays you see a trend. When the moon of Ramadan is seen, all over the world, all over TV stations and radio, people start begging and collecting charity for masajid. We are building a masjid. We are building a masjid in so-and-so area. The first thing that we need to understand is that before you build a masjid, have you got people that will make that masjid abad? Have you got people that will recite namaz in that masjid? You know, in Pakistan, we have one street and they have six masajid. And in Eid masajid, there's not even one saf. There is probably four, five, six people in each masjid. What is the purpose of that masjid? This is why in the fiqh of Jafariya, those that follow Imam Jafar Sadiq, we are... Can we have a loud salawat, please? That's why we are not allowed <coughs> to have Jummah, which is less than three and a half miles in the radius of another place which is having Juma. Because the maqsad is not this, that we build thousands of mosques. What is happening to the churches now? We see that every single church, in one street there used to be four churches. And now probably in one city you will find four or five functioning churches. I mean, they are all closing. People are moving away. Now, do we want to bombard people with masajid in such a way that the people says that mosque has been made by Chaudhary Sahib, that mosque has been made by Shaji, that mosque has been made by Raja Sahib. If I go to that mosque and not go to that mosque, Raja Sahib will be upset. If I go to Raja Sahib's mosque, the Shah Sahib will be upset. If I go to the Shah Sahib's mosque, Chaudhary Sahib will be upset. Yani masajid now are not a place of Allah Azawajal. They are associated with the people who have built them. Imam Bargahs as well. That Imam Bargah is of the Qurayshis. That Imam Bargah is of the Ummatis. That Imam Bargah is of the Sadat. 
O people of God, Masjid belongs to Allah Azzawajal. Imam Barga belongs to Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Who are we to associate our names with them? Yani, the name of the Masjid is Masjid Ali. But nobody knows by the name of Masjid Ali. This is the Imam Barga or the Masjid of the Sadat. Who are you doing all this for? To move close to Allah or move away from Allah Azzawajal? Yani the first thing that will complain on the day of Qiyamah is a masjid. A masjid will say, Ya Ilahi, they created me. They made me. They spent so much money. But when the time for namaz came, only two people were standing. When the time for namaz came, a person came and gave the azan, but nobody came to read namaz. Many masajid we have now in Pakistan, especially, that every darbar, naal masjid bana diyo. Why? Why make a masjid if nobody is going to read namaz there? Why dig a well in the middle of a jungle where nobody is going to drink water from? A masjid is a house of Allah Azza But what can we say? MashaAllah, we the British, we are building uh, houses in Pakistan which for 5-10 years at a time they are left empty. Yani this is israf what we are doing. We are spending out of that halal risk which we could use to serve a, a poor family. So the first thing that will complain on the day of Mashir, on the day of Qiyamah is a masjid. The second thing who will make a complaint in front of Allah Azzawajal is that alim, that teacher who had knowledge to teach people, but nobody made use of his knowledge. Yani when Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam, when Mawla was about to leave this dunya, Mawla's words were that I am upset that the ilm that Allah had given me, people did not ask me enough questions. And the mal which Allah gave me, people did not ask me from that mal. Yani this was the hasrat of Amir al On the day of Qiyamah, that alim, that teacher, will complain to Allah Azzawajal. Ya Ilahi, I had spent my years studying. I saw hunger, I saw difficulties, but nobody came to question me. The problem in our society now is that if a Maulana, an Alim, a teacher goes forward to the community to try to teach Deen, people say, eh, apna koi matlab yani he has something that he probably wants. That's why he has come to us. Unfortunately, I have seen a decline in people trying to go to the Hoza. Why? Because when they see the troubles in our society, that senior ulama karam who have spent, alaykum assalam, who have spent nearly 50 years of their life serving the community. 50 years. When that Maulana is unable to stand and st sit, the committee gets together, Maulana Sahib no farak karo. Why? Because Maulana Sahib is not able to fulfill our needs. What about the last 50 years that he's been serving you? He's been serving you for peanuts. The problem in our community is that every single person has a job. And we consider that as a job. A taxi driver, if he leaves his job and comes to the Imam Barga, everyone has a sas that he has left his work. If a Maulana comes from the outside, every single person has a sas, he is our mahman, we need to pay him. But that Gharib Maulana, that is the resident Maulana of any center, nobody thinks about him. 
یعنی اکارڈنگ ٹو امام جعفر صادق دچ آلے will make a complaint on the day of Qiyamah. Don't think that I am tying this to myself. I am trying to narrate a hadith in regards to all ulama. Yani if you know an alim in your area back home here, you know that he's got no other work, especially back home. You know that that Maulana sahab is not able to now read namaz standing up. He has spent 50 years of his life, janaze, eid, Nikaz, everything he has done. Why in his final years of his life he is thrown under the bus? He is left to beg people. He is left to even beg Ahl Sunnah. Why? Are you not answerable to the Imam for that? We think about everyone else. Yani we have a teacher in school that teaches us. Till we die, we remember that worldly knowledge. Oh, he was my head teacher. She was my maths teacher. He taught me history. That person who has molded you into a dini person that you are, molded you into a person that is going to enter Jannat because of his ilm. For you, that means nothing. So the second thing that will complain of the person is an alim who was left amongst the ignorant and those people did not take istifada of his name. Try. If you cannot attend the masjid, cannot attend the Maam Bargah, Shabbat Juma is today, make a niyat, make a promise to yourself that if you cannot go to the Imam Bargah or masjid, at least every Shabbat Juma, just open any Islamic book and try to narrate one hadith to your children. Why? Again, matlabi, insan, our nature is we don't do anything without advantage to us. Imam Jafra Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. Imam says that teach your children our love before our enemies make them against us. It comes to namaz, ni aja umar thodi yedi. Comes to fasting, no, he won't be able to hack it. But today you say to him, oh, uh, let's go do something, uh, watch a film in the cinema. You don't need an age for that. Even if you has to watch an 18 plus film, you're not bothered because he wants to watch it. Why is it when it comes to deen, you start weighing everything? You start measuring everything. The problem in our society, in our community is our children are going and knocking on else people's doors. Why? Because we are not welcoming them. We only teach them the Ahlul Bayt is only for Muharram. Ramadan, which is the most important month, the month of Allah, Abzal than 70,000 years combined. But for us, it is a get-together of eating food. Maulana Sahib goes five minutes over. From the kitchen, people say, Qibla time ho gaya ni. Why? Yani a person who can fast for 12 hours, a few moments in completing a hadith, people start looking and tapping on their clock, on their watches. Is this is what Deen is left to? Yani, you can sit all night and watch a, a series of dramas. You can sit all night and you can watch films. But when it comes to Deen, when it comes to learning from Ahlul Bayt, you have excuses. Is Deen only left for excuses? Yani, if we don't fix ourselves and we don't fix our society, our children. Then just imagine which way are we going? Which Imam are we praying for then? So the third that will complain on the day of Qiyamah in front of Allah Azawajal is that Quran which you have left at home collecting dust. Allahu Akbar. 
I know many people that have not opened the Quran for many years. Quran is now only left for weddings. Quran is now only left for when someone is going on a trip, is going to Dubai, Quran sarte rakho. He's going to trip to Ibiza, Quran sarte rakho. Yani Quran is only left, Quran is now only used as a formality. How many times have you said to your children, me included, that you are going to college, read a verse from the Quran with translation. You all claim to be a Muslim. You all claim to be a Shia of Ali. What answer will you have for your Imam when the Quran is complaining about you? When the Quran is saying that they heard that Ali is connected with the Quran and the Quran is connected with Ali. They heard that Ahlul Bayt are with the Quran and the Quran is with Ahlul Bayt. They heard the fazilat and azmat of the Quran. Yet, Ya Ilahi, they refuse to read me. Quran, Quran, Quran is that nur that is not only for the month of Ramadan. Quran is that nur that if you open the Quran at home with the barakat of the Quran, your house can change. You know, I've narrated this in the first few days of Ramadan, that the angels in the seventh heaven, they see our houses like stars in the skies. Which house? Any normal house? No. That house in which Quran is being read. That house in which the tilawat of the Quran is done. That house to the angels is like we look at the stars. That is the azmat and the fazilat of the Quran. Imam Hussein sacrificed everything in Karbala for Quran. Bibi Zainab gave her chadar for the Quran. Uh -huh. Ali Askar was killed because of the Quran. How do you think our Mawla Imam Hussein is looking at us when we have no regard to the Quran? Teach your children Quran, not in the sense that once they have completed the Quran, your formality is done. Quran is not just so that you can just repeat it over and over again, but the maqsad of the Quran is so that you can take hidayat from it. Quran is hidayat for you. It is guidance for you. Quran is that nur that insha'Allah, it has shifa for everything insha'Allah. So just to recap, three things will complain on the day of Qiyamah. And I hope insha'Allah we will try to make sure that these three things don't complain about us, the mu'maneen insha'Allah. The first is that masjid that you have built or people are built that nobody uses or takes istifada from. The second is that alim, that teacher who is amongst you, but you do not take any advantage from his knowledge. The third is the Quran, which is in every single person's house. There is no Muslim, no Mu'min, Sunni, Shia, no matter who you are. There is no Muslim who recites La ilaha illallah, who does not have the Quran. The Quran will complain on that day. Just imagine, we have so many other complaints. So many people complaining, he hurt me, he took my haq, he did this, he did that. On top of all those complaints, the Quran is complaining. How will we show our face to Imam Mahdi? How will we show our face to Imam Zamana? So inshallah, with these days which are going very quickly, we only have a few days left of this blessed month of Ramadan. Today, make the niyyat. Ya Ilahi, I will make sure that me and my household won't be amongst those people that the Quran, the Masjid or the Alam will complain about. Insha'Allah, 
try to make use of the time that Allah has given you in this blessed month of Ramadan. Insha'Allah, we do dua. Ya Ilahi, for the sake of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, every single person that has been attending these iftaris from the first of Ramadan up to today, bless them with the zikr of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. Ya Ilahi, every single person who is helping Anjuman, Ghulaman, Aulad Zahra, bless them so that they can continue to support the mission of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam. Ya Ilahi, all those that are ill, give them shifa through the wasila of Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salatu was salam. All those that do not have children, Give them awlaad with the wasila of Babu al-Hawaij, Hazrat Ali Askar alayhi salatu was salam. Ya Ilai, especially today's iftari has been kindly arranged by Asam Ali of Leeds. We do dua, Ya Ilahi, give wasi a risk in his household for the sake of the zikr of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam. Ya Ilahi, bless his household, especially his children. Give them khair and barakat and protection from jinnat, from every dushman, hasadeen, especially Asim Ali's children, Atif Ali, Jafar Ali, Musa Ali, and Suqina Ali. Ya Ilahi, bless them with the wasila of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu Ya Ilahi, especially the Muhammad of Asim Ali, uh, his father, Muhammad Asif, and uh, his mother, Kaniz or Rubab and his marhum brother Atif Ali, and Ya Ilahi, Mamu Bashir, as well. Mamu Bashir and Dada Muhammad Aslam, Ya Ilahi, give them a space in the jawar of A'imma alayhi salatu was salam. Ya Ilahi, all the in-laws of his missus, give them shifa'at of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. All of that du'as, Ya Ilahi, accept them for the sake of Babu al-Hawa'ij, Hazrat Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, Alamdari Hussain alayhi salatu was salam. Ya Ilahi, hasan the reappearance of our 12th Imam, Imam Sahib al-Asr al-Zaman. Everyone together with the loudest of your voices, Allahumma ajil lewaliyya. Allahumma ajil le waliye kal faraj. Allahumma ajil le waliye kal faraj. Rabbi salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Bi rahmatika ya